Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 71 of Photo Critiques. And in Photo Critiques, people send me in some of their best images and I critique each shot with suggestions on how they could improve it. And today I'm pleased to critique the work of Gordon Bishop. Gordon sent me in some really nice shots. And this first one, as I look at it, it says B. And I spent a long time trying to find a B in this shot, so I don't see it. But it's a pretty cool shot. I like the colors. Very well done. This is a scene, as I look at it, that's kind of interesting. It's a little busy. So we have the tree, we have the, the uh, hedges, uh, the shrubbery, as uh, Monty Python might say. And, you know, we have the flower, of course, and these interesting leaves, some rocks here. I think it's a little too busy. And what I would suggest you do on this one is you would get a horizontal shot of just the flowers. They're in the shade, and I think you would have had a nice shot of just the flowers. Um, I would low ISO on that. Use just enough. Um, close down your uh, aperture just enough so you have the, ent the entire group of flowers in focus. And I think that would have been a nice shot. As I look at the scene, though, um, the shrubbery is very interesting. And I'm wondering if there's a leading line you could have, you could have uh, exploited with the sh shrubbery. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking of Monty Python when I say that. Um, with the hedges, all right? I'm going to crack up laughing. Okay, with the hedges, if you could uh, utilize that and exploit a leading line with that, maybe that could lead, it's leading to an interesting flower or something. And um, that's, you know, all part of working the scene. Also, the tree is very interesting, um, very uh, craggy looking and, and interesting bark pattern, twisted gnarled. So I'm wondering if uh, you could have utilized the tree somehow in into a wholly different shot. I'm not talking about these flowers. I'm just talking about the scene. So be aware when you uh, come upon somewhere you're going to photograph. Look around. Take your time and get an idea and see if you see something that could be conducive to a leading line and see how you could integrate it into a shot. And you see if you uh, see something with this unique texture, this twisted bark of this tree and see if you could um, somehow uh, get that exploited into a shot and you know all part of the uh, process you have to go through your brain as you're thinking about the scene and of course you know the nice shrubbery helps too. This is a brilliant shot. This is a beautiful shot. Um, I always talk about strong focus on the eyes. Now I had to blow this up um, to um, make it so we could see it. But believe me, the original image when I looked at it, the eyes were in beautiful, beautiful focus. And that, I harp on that all the time, is the eyes have to be in nice focus, nice focus. The problem you have with photographing um, birds particularly, because their beak is so much far, you know, far in front of their eyes, if you don't aren't careful with your focus, your camera is going to grab focus usually on the beak. And the eyes will be blurry and those shots are nowhere near as strong as a shot especially a raptor with the piercing eyes you want those to be in real tight focus and and um, Gordon did a fantastic job with this shot I love it the um, other thing is the with the f-stop you want to have just enough f-stop once you focus on the eyes you want it close down just enough so the beak is in focus too and um, Gordon did fantastic as you can see did a great job on this shot this is a, a very nice shot usually with women when you photograph women you don't want strong side light so you want strong side light with a you know an old especially an older man um, you know like a, you think of the vision of a cowboy with the stubble on his face you know maybe a barroom scar on his face that's when you want the side light that kind of shows off these you know w worn weathered faces that some men might have um, which I am becoming getting one as I get older usually with women especially young women you want the light a little flatter but it works on this shot and um, you did a very nice job and I think converting it to black and white helps too that helps the side lighting is going to show off any blemishes, but the black and white processing was going to subdue and, and uh, bring down the blemishes. They won't be as noticeable. So it was very nicely done. 
The only other suggestion I could make is always be careful of the backgrounds. This um, photo or this photograph, this painting, you know, the frame back here is a little bit distracting and it makes her hair a little bit blend in with it. So we, we um, always be conscious of when you photograph people of what the background is or animals even, you know, you're photographing something uh, that's in the foreground. You know, really look past them and see what the background is like and make sure that you're, you don't have a problem with that. Years ago, I um, stood up in my one of my good friend's weddings and I didn't know who the photographer was and when I saw the pictures he took pictures of them at the botanical gardens and there were these uh, like Japanese lamps and the Japanese lamps on several of the shots were right sitting even though they were in the background they were sitting right on their head it looked like they had like these stupid hats on so you always I mean it looked ridiculous is what I'm trying to say so you always got to be conscious of what's in the background and be careful that you don't um, you know, get them wearing funny looking hats or anything like that. This uh, shot, I'm not sh exactly sure how this was done. This is one of those ones that you might do, you know, as a macro experiment um, or you do it, you know, for photography school. You're trying to take a course in photography and they have you do stuff like this. And it's very well done, obviously. It's a nice abstract, very nicely done. I wish I could give you guys hints uh, of how um, Gordon did it, but I'm not sure. Uh, but it's really cool. This shot we we have we call these God rays. You know the God rays coming in, and then we have this um, starburst effect. I've mentioned many times. If you want that effect, use a small aperture. Usually um, around f13 will give you a real pronounced effect. And as you can see, uh, Gordon used f16, so it worked out real well. The scene itself, though, uh, it's really just this same color green all around. It's, um, you know, the star of the show is the light. I, it's just, I wish something else was in there to offer some scale to give you an idea of, of how big of an area this is. Uh, you know, maybe someone walking along the path or, you know, anything. But, um, you know, it's, it's a nice exposure. It's very hard to get the exposure just right, and Gordon did a nice job. I like this shot a lot. I've actually taken some shots like this messing around and you put the light behind uh, the flower, you, you know, spray some water on it. It almost looks like sometimes it's underwater when you do this and it's a really nice shot. Very nice exposure and again, like all of Gordon's images, very nice focus. Very nice focus. And that's it. That's all we got for Gordon. Um, that Thank you very much, Gordon, for sharing your work with us. Obviously, you're uh, very very talented photographer I you know I can't offer you too many tips you, you're doing a really great job and um, hope to see some more of your work someday and I'd like to thank everyone who watches all my videos I really do appreciate it and if you have time go over to my website anthonymorganti.com I got all kinds of photography stuff over there and go to YouTube and if you didn't already please subscribe to my YouTube channel I'd really appreciate that and that's it for episode 71 I'll talk to you guys soon